Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle program, and I'm your host, Chris Angle. This is, uh, I'm the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is the Philosophical Equations of Economics. Along with me is Rick Samuelson, a venture capitalist on the West Coast. Good to see you, Rick. And you. The purpose of the Philosophical Angle is to examine the nature of concepts being used in current media, and secondarily to use those definitions to understand the righteousness and the ethical superiority of conservative positions. And this week we're going to kind of go uh, a little bit afield of what's directly in the news because we're going to ask ourselves why is there a, pro a proclivity for liberals to start a war? It's an interesting subject and if we look back over the, the last hundred years we see that they've started just about everything. So, is there a, procl a proclivity, is there a, an increase in chance uh, that liberals do start wars and have, uh, and, and if we go back even more than 100 years ago, whether that remains true. So we're going to, uh, we're going to take a look at this. And the first thing I'm going to say is that the left believes that all those who are who are not left are inherently bad, and that is that the conservative and all Republicans' natures are uh, they believe uh, is not good, and the left believes, of course, that that its uh, that its nature is good and inherently good, and the leftist believes that their nature is good, but all others are inherently bad and, and even evil. Uh, and because they believe that people are inherently bad, the left feels that they need government to control this badness. And when they need government, uh, and they need it because it has the power of coercion. And uh, therefore, the, the leftist seeks uh, employment inside the government, uh, in addition to, of course, uh, running for, for office and be uh, political operatives of, of the government, uh, because there uh, lies the power of coercion. And the uh, leftist naturally seeks to be involved in making laws and regulations that are, that are enforced by government. And, and these laws and regulations are, are made to restrict and control and limit people's freedom within society. So consequently, the laws and regulations for uh, the most part function as a type of anti-knowledge. Uh, normally we, we create knowledge to, to bring that which is good uh, into our lives, but restriction on that uh, is, a, is what I call anti-knowledge. And therefore the, the leftist in general works toward a, a larger government, and the leftist looks to, to make government more powerful and controlling, and it does so by the enforcement of its laws and regulations in order to control those who are who are bad, inherently bad. That that is the, their nature uh, is bad, and these are the Republicans and conservatives, and and those outside of the the liberal mindset. But not only does the leftist want to enlarge government of its own uh, uh, of its own country, and uh, it knows that. Others outside of the country, throughout the world, uh, that there are other people that are uh, that are bad and that are in need of government, um, and so the leftist works toward a, a globalism. And one of the manifestations of this is the construction of the United Nations, uh, originally thought by and brought forth by uh, Woodrow Wilson, a, a progressive liberal. And another example, of this would be the European Union, where individual cultures of the uh, European uh, continent are combined into one economic union, and this is a form of globalization also. Uh, and uh, they, so the the leftist tends to work for, toward this this globalism, and these rules and regulations of the leftist they emanate from his ideology, and and the ideology is is that which says how other people should live, and so uh, he wants to bring forward his uh, his ideology and. And what would and, and this ideology is that uh, he needs to control uh, people who are bad. But uh, the question uh, arises: 
could this could this cause violence? Could this type of ideology cause violence? In other words, does the proclivity of the leftist to make laws and regulations exacerbate a tendency to cause violence or, or war or, or to get into war? It's a pretty interesting question. So let's summarize. The left seeks to accumulate power in order to be able to create more laws and regulations to control those that are bad in society. And uh, in order to accumulate power in, in society through government, the government mu must also accumulate the available rights that are outstanding in society. At this point, we, we should remind ourselves uh, what is a right? What is the nature of a right? And rights exist only within contracts, agreements, covenants, or any other contractual agreement whereby people want to cooperate together. In any agreement, uh, each party has one right and one obligation. Then, so we're going to take an example of this. Uh, we go to uh, to the store to buy a product, whatever it, it may be. Uh, you might go and uh, down to the drugstore and buy some toothpaste or whatever, uh, or the car dealership to buy a car, and you take the uh, and you take that product with, <clears throat> up to uh, to the cash register at the drugstore and. Uh, and in order to claim, uh, for you to claim this product, the following must occur. You, you put the product on the countertop payment area. You fulfill your obligation to give money to the cashier. And the cashier has the right to receive the money and the obligation to give you the product. You have the right to receive that product. All par uh, so all participants of any transaction have an obligation and a right. And the reason why this is important is because in order to accumulate power, one must accumulate those rights. And most people say power equals money, uh, but in actuality, rights equal power. So power equals money and money equals power, but, but rights equal power. So when a leftist accumulates power to be held within the, the government, it must seek the accumulation of the rights held by the people. And the essence of a right is the receiving of a reward, which is the result of a sacrifice of a, of a, of a, of a corporation or, or a natural person's time, effort, the material, and uh, information and knowledge amidst ri uh, uh, a situation of risk uh, that are involved to obtain that reward. And so anytime you strive, uh, you're making a sacrifice of your time, your effort, uh, your, your information and your knowledge uh, amidst the risk and, and, and also your material uh, to achieve any reward. And an obligation can... Uh, consists of the of the sacrifice that the entity life that a life entity makes in order to produce the reward that life seeks continually. In other words, life seeks goodness continually. Um, all throughout one's life, uh, everybody seeks goodness. So as a, a government accumulates rights, it accumulates the rewards that sacrifice that the society is producing. But uh, a curious thing happens as rights are accumulated in any, in any depository anywhere. As rights are accumulated in any single depository, such as a, such as a government, uh, it accordingly induces corruption. And therefore, the, the great expression by Lord Acton is, uh, is well known, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And now we need to understand, or, or, we, or, or we can review, why that is. And uh, suppose a, a totalitarian leader is interested in a particular ideology, say, for example, Islam or communism, and, or today, uh, uh, it's popular on TV right now, uh, where the, the, the Democrats are changing the, uh, the word for uh, communism to collectivism. Um, uh, but uh, so in any, any particular ideology, um, 
uh, where there is a totalitarian leader. The absolute leader takes an interest in one of those ideologies and then starts to make the priority that he will mold the society to be commensurate with such an ideology. All government leaders have to make decisions of great importance, but those with absolute power can, can make them without resistance, uh, without restraint from, from anybody uh, in their society. They can do this because they have absolute power. Um, they can make their decisions without receiving influence or cooperation from others. Uh, or, and so uh, or, or when they're not receiving input and, and advice from others, they're unrestrained in, in, uh, by their, their government powers. And uh, when the totalitarian leader makes such a change, he does not seek the influence or advice of prominent leaders in, in society with, uh, with their knowledge. And, and that a totalitarian leader does not, does not seek a, a democratic vote of confidence uh, uh, by the new society and the society in which he's in. He's, he does it without influence. And therefore, the totalitarian, the totalitarian leader seeks only the thoughtfulness of himself or his immediate advisors, uh, if any, uh, who would also hold the, uh, the same priorities uh, that are close to his because he as well as life in general, does not like competition. Uh, everybody uh, always t seeks to avoid competition. So uh, he will he will uh, try to ev uh, uh, evade competition. He does so in order to having to have to avoid having experience um, the same experience and the, the the second half of competition, which is that divergence of of priorities. And so. When you have any type of type competition, it's the convergence of the, your priorities. And the second half of competition is to naturally avoid the, uh, the, the, close, the, the, di uh, the convergence of, of competition by diverting from those clashing priorities. So uh, the, totalitarian, the totalitarian leader becomes selfish introverted and often this is accompanied by paranoia and this is the corruption of oneself uh, and therefore absolute power corrupts absolutely and we and so we know absolute power corrupts absolutely uh, we have established uh, a reason why it is uh, we have to establish a reason why it is necessarily so and the reason is that because there is no cooperative behavior in a totalitarian's life, he will descend into selfishness. And uh, as a totalitarian leader no, no longer has any reason to cooperate with others, he will examine his priorities only in making a decision. And if his priorities he chooses to live by tend uh, away from the first dictum of life and economics, which is for the individual life entity to seek goodness for itself, um, but for the uh, individuals to seek collective goodness established by he who has absolute power, then the country is in for a problem. And because he's totalitarian and doesn't have to accept any other priorities other than, of course, his own, the amount of obligation to cooperate with others diminishes almost to zero. And and that in itself is a type of corruption because it's natural and easy to be selfish uh, and the totalitarian necessarily does become selfish and looks to its own priorities and the more you are isolated due to non-cooperative behavior you'll believe that your cooperatives your, co your priorities and, and thought are superla superlative and thus the, del the delusional despot concludes that others should follow his way and and so, as these rights accumulate within the, the despot, cooperation is obliterated, and the whims and priorities of that central depository of rights, which is the, the, the totalitarian leader, as they become paramount and thus uh, uh, they become unpredictable, and as such, the, perpeten the perten propensity of war increases as the power will want to accumulate 
as the, the, the totalitarian will want to accumulate more power to fulfill the, the priorities of, of, uh, of, uh, of what he thinks. And uh, we know this to be true because of the, the first dictum of economics, which is that life continually seeks that which is good for it, never ending, constantly. And as power is accumulated in government, the more we, we may assume that the, the government is, is leftist. Thus, examples of leftist regimes are Hitler and Stalin and Pol Pot and Islamic countries and, and all previous totalitarian regimes, including the despotic regimes of, of old times, all throughout the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, and all the totalitarian kings and queens there, they're all of essentially the same totalitarian leftist nature. So I've kind of spoken enough. Let's see what Rick has to uh, has to say about this subject. Well, uh, <clears throat> speaking of events today, if you consider the regimes are on the uh, obviously China is an expansive military power, um, which is opposed, directly opposed to uh, the normal behavior of democracies. Russia is in league with China, of course, following its own agenda, but certainly an obviously aggressive power uh, militarily. Um, the theocracies, uh, namely Iran, and to a lesser extent, Turkey are following a similar approach, again, ideologically driven, uh, but with a theocratic bent. And then, of course, on a much smaller scale, we see Cuba's intervention in Venezuela with disastrous socialist results. So you don't have to look very far around the world to see the potential damage that these totalitarian uh, generally leftist bent uh, nation states are, are capable of and unfortunately I think particularly in the case of China and Russia uh, the worst is yet to come um, I would add that we're seeing within our own country um, a slight tendency in this direction uh, in this in the sovereign state of California uh, where the same kind of massive government intervention, control of, of all elements uh, of society to the extent possible within a, a republic uh, is what they strive for. And what they have achieved is complete domination by one party. And this is kind of their model. This has become the, the model for the Democrats. Uh, the Republicans are, have been reduced to a vestige of what they originally were even 10 years ago. Um, so the Democrats have effectively supermajority uh, in all the um, parts of government. They control the governorship, they control the courts, um, and you know ultimately uh, California is reaping the the horrors of, of that approach, with now the highest uh, poverty rate in the United States. Uh, one third of all welfare recipients are now found. In California, within the United States, even though it's a much smaller percentage of the total U.S. population, the educational standards are amongst the worst now uh, in the United States, um, and they were amongst the best uh, 25 years ago. So, this, you know, single-party, uh, quasi-totalitarian control is even um, working its magic, if you will, uh, within one particular state in the United States. Hey, you mentioned something about uh, Iran and China. Uh, they seem to be um, cooperating together. And um, do you think that that could possibly be for the, uh, be for the uh, their thoughts of the future and, and creating uh, trouble and, and possibly even war or some sort of conflict in the future? Well, I think Italians, totalitarian states are all, you know, they, they, they have allies of convenience. It was like Stalin and Hitler during World War II. So as long as they have, you know, mutually shared aims and a common, common enemy, um, they'll work together. Uh, but, be, 
because they're totalitarian, they'll never be friends. Right. Do you think any? Uh, do you think uh, you mentioned Iran in particular, and do you think they have a proclivity to uh, uh, for, or, or potentiality to create a war? Well, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think they're involved in numerous proxy wars already. They're funding terrorists uh, across the Middle East and in Europe. Uh, so, you know, their preferred method is, you know, to do it on the cheap. They don't have the resources of a China or a Russia, but you know, they're still very, very disruptive on the international stage. Let me ask you the same question for China. Well, China has about a third the military budget we do. They now have a bigger economy than we do. Uh, they stated their intention to build a blue water navy. Um, they're building bases all across the South China Sea. They're threatening neighbors. I, I don't know how much more proof one needs of their hostile intent. Who's going to hold them in check? If well, anybody. Only the United States. I mean, the, 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 the Europe has no military left to speak of, so it can only be the United States. What about the Japan? The Japan self defense. The Japan. Yeah, doesn't the Japan uh, self defense force about the largest in in Asia? It, it is if, if they choose to use it. Hmm. Okay. Um, thanks very much, Rick, for. Uh, your insights, and uh, we'll see everybody next week on The Philosophical Angle. All right. Thank you.